of each month from 12 to 12.30, where we discuss a different scam and how you can protect yourself and your family from becoming victimized. <clears throat> My name is Jim Aldred, and I'm a volunteer with AARP Massachusetts. And our guest today is Teresa Chakos, who is also a volunteer with AARP, AARP Massachusetts Speakers Bureau. The Medicare open enrollment period begins next month on October 15th, and it runs through December 7th. So we thought this might be a very good time to take a look at Medicare scams and fraud. You may have joined us today with questions already in mind. And if you have, please put them in the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. Or if questions come up during the presentations, again, put them in the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. This session is being recorded and you'll receive a copy of this recording to share with family and friends. At the end of the presentation, we'll share a page with links to a number of resources that you'll be able to receive a copy of that as well. Teresa is going to provide us with information on the top scams that the Senior Medicare Pro Patrol has identified, and she'll provide steps, or rather specific steps, on how to spot and prevent and report Medicare fraud and scams. Teresa, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just barely. Um, can you start by telling us about the Senior Medicare Patrol in their efforts to fight Medicare fraud? Sure, but Jim, but before I do that, I think it's important to know that when we talk about Medicare fraud, we're not talking about beneficiaries perpetrating the fraud. We're talking about criminals who are trying to steal from us. Those of us who are beneficiaries or caregivers are the first line of defense to protect Medicare. So the Senior Medicare Patrol, also known as the SMP, came about in 1997 with a mission to reduce the amount of fraud in healthcare. The Medicare annual budget is well over $600 billion, and it is estimated that 10% or $60 billion go to fraud, waste, and abuse. SMP is funded through the Department of Health and Human Services to address these expenditures. There is an SMP program in all 50 states and all the four US territories. All SMP programs depend on volunteers to educate and counsel their peers, Medicare beneficiaries, family members, caregivers, and life partners. In fact, all healthcare consumers. SMP conducts research and outreach and education. SMP conducts outreach, education, and counseling at events and delivers presentations to groups and works one on one with Medicare beneficiaries to help them prevent, detect, and report healthcare errors, fraud, and abuse. Senior Medicare Patrol volunteers are often the first to identify new Medicare scams because they meet one-on-one -on -one with Medicare beneficiaries. So here are the top seven Medicare scams reported by the Senior Medicare Patrol. The first is a new round of COVID fraud. During the height of COVID-19, as a way to gather people's Medicare numbers and other personal information and, and file fake claims in their name, criminals often offered free coronavirus tests. COVID has not gone away and there are new variants. Scammers keep up with the news and old deceptions are recycled to take advantage of what they hear in the news reports. Here's how the scam works. You receive an unsolicited call, text, or message offering to send you COVID tests. They tell you that in order to send the test, they need your Medicare number. Scammers aren't sending real tests, but they're billing Medicare as if they are, and they're taking your personal information either to use it or sell it. It is a huge problem. And after a ma major investigation, the Department of Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General charged 18 defendants in nine federal districts across the United States for making more than $490 million in COVID-related false billings. 
The scam died down when the COVID health emergency expired in May of 2023. But senior Medicare patrols have seen an increase with the recent uptick in COVID cases and the new variant that's been detected. The second scam they use involves bills for durable medical goods, specifically diabetes supplies and catheters. Volunteers in Texas report an increase in, in these diabetes supply scams. Claims for continuous glucose monitoring devices are showing up on Medicare summary notices for people who don't have diabetes and didn't receive the device but the scammers charge Medicare for them. Here in Massachusetts, we're seeing the same problem with catheters. Medicare is being billed for supplies not received or that were not ordered by the beneficiary. And the only reason SMP is seeking these cases is that people on traditional Medicare A and B are checking their Medicare summary notices or MSNs and those on Medicare Advantage plans are looking at their explanation of benefits or EOBs and are reporting it. Some of the comments that SMP volunteers get when conducting an educational session is that they find the MSNs and EOBs too complicated. It's important to have someone help you understand it. Remember, Anything on the MSNs or EOBs become part of your health record and you don't want wrong information there. Yeah. Chris, I've also heard that the beneficiaries don't look at these notices because the top says this is not a bill. Is there any yeah. truth to that? Yeah, you're right, Jim. But, but what MSNs and EOBs are is a statement documenting medical treatment, services, equipment that you've received. It could show that Medicare paid for a service or equipment that you did not receive. So the third type of Medicare fraud is for flimsy medical equipment. This is a long-standing Medicare problem. Criminals offer you a knee brace or other medical equipment um, if you give them your Medicare number. Again, these offers come from an unsolicited call text or email or even posts on social media. You'll get a cheap brace in the mail that you could have purchased at a drugstore, or you might receive no brace at all, or you may receive a box of different braces, all billed to Medicare and are now a part of your health record. The criminals charge Medicare for an expensive brace and make other unauthorized charges on your with your Medicare number. In 2019, Senior Medicare patrol volunteers helped uncover an international fraud ring that charged Medicare $1.2 billion in false durable medical equipment claims. Scam number four is bogus genetic testing kits. Even though the senior Medicare patrol helped uncover a $2.1 billion genetic testing scam, Phony pitches are still an issue. For instance, someone at a health fair might offer to swab your cheek and test the sample to determine whether you have a genetic propensity for cancer. Then the scammer says, you need to give your Medicare number to cover the test. In reality, Medicare rarely covers genetic testing and scammers use the ploy to get your Medicare number and make all sorts of fraudulent charges in your name. Many times, the Medicare beneficiaries would not get the test results at all. The scammers would just discard the swabs and use the Medicare number. Your physician is the only one who can write an order for a genetic test. Teresa, I'm beginning to see why Medicare beneficiaries are the first line of defense in protecting Medicare. That one point something billion dollars, that's a lot of money. So what's scam number five on your list? Number five on the list is hospice care fraud. Much like a 2021 California case, scammers enroll people who are not terminally ill into hospice without their knowledge. The Medicare beneficiaries Instead, may believe they are signing up for extra benefits, 
um, such as home cleaning, in-home nurse visits, or a shower chair. Scammers have a doctor that works with them who are diagnosing people and sending paperwork to Medicare claiming thousands of dollars for hospice payment. The criminals receive payment from Medicare for hospice services never delivered, and that can lead to having a legitimate hospice claim denied. Number six concerns the Medicare card itself. Medicare saw a big increase in card scams in 2018 when the government sent every beneficiary new cards that did not include social security numbers. Senior Medicare patrol volunteers are seeing some card scams resurfacing. In parts of the country, there was an influx of people reporting to the SMP volunteers that they were receiving unsolicited calls from people who were falsely claiming to be a Medicare representative and offering a new card, uh, maybe a plastic card with a chip. The scammers ask for money for the new card or ask to verify your Medicare number. Listen, Medicare will not call you to offer you a new card. Its cards are paper stock and you can print out an official card from your online Medicare account anytime at mymedicare.gov. What's more, Medicare won't ever call you without scheduling an appointment ahead of time. Finally, the last area scammers focus on are telemedicine sessions. It works like this. You may get a call from somebody who's trying to sell you something, and then you'll get billed for a telehealth consult. Sometimes the fraud is tied to genetic testing or flimsy medical equipment, as I mentioned before, and the criminals will add a telemedicine appointment to the Medicare bill. And again, all this becomes part of your Medicare health record and could affect receiving certain services in the future. Yeah, Teresa, um, can you talk a little bit more about what beneficiaries can do to protect Medicare and their personal information? Sure. First, protect your Medicare card. You should only carry it when you go to the doctor or pharmacy. You should not carry it in your wallet on a regular basis. Personally, mine stays in my desk and I have it, a picture of it, you know, on my computer or on my phone. Next, do not provide your Medicare number over the phone or in person to anyone who, do, who you don't know or trust. In fact, if you have caller ID, don't answer the phone unless you know who is calling. And remember, even caller IDs can be faked. Third, keep a record of all medical events. You'll want to compare them to your Medicare summary notice or the explanation of benefits and other billing documents for accuracy. In addition to having Medicare pay for a service or Medicare medical device you didn't receive, it now becomes part of your electronic health record and it could have consequences. And finally, take action. If you suspect errors, fraud, or abuse, contact your state SMP program. And I have I have an admission to make. Uh -oh. I, I, yeah, exactly. Uh oh, <laughs> I have been carrying my Medicare cards with me. I don't know if you can see them here. I've been carrying them around in my wallet all the time, and I just <laughs> I just took them out and I'm putting them. Uh, in yeah. my desk, and I have pictures of them on my phone. So yeah. there you go. I'm te you know I'm in this program, and I'm always I'm <laughs> I'm breaking protocols myself. <laughs> okay, Teresa, does SMP know why people don't report fraud, errors, and abuses? What, what's with that? There's several reasons. Um, one, it's not impacting their pocketbook directly. Medicare paid, and there was no copay or deductible. Two, beneficiaries don't want to bother the doctor, but it should be the first thing you do. It, it may simply be a billing error. Three, beneficiaries find the MSN or EOB confusing and are not sure what questions to ask. SMP can help you with that. Four, 
Beneficiaries who may be part of a minority community based on race, ethnicity, religion, country of origin, sexual orientation, or language, and have little or no support are uncomfortable asking for help or may not know what questions to ask. Five, some beneficiaries may think they are probably the only person having this problem, and chances are there are others. And although we're talking about Medicare, these same things are, can apply to all health insurance. Remember, beneficiaries are the front line of defense for protecting Medicare. Yeah, really. Um, well, based on this information that you've given me and everybody else that's on the website, um, rather this webinar, uh, you've provided a lot of education, awareness, and vigilance in our best line of defense. Thanks, Teresa, for this tremendous information. Um, let's you see know, what we have. I Go just ahead. want to add, like, you know how most of our doctors now, um, you know, you have this um, um, website that where you can go and make your appointments or send a message to your doctor and things like that. You can also load your Medicare card and other health insurance cards there so that, the, the you know, when you go to check in for the doctor's office, they have that there. And that's the other reason why you don't necessarily need to carry these cards with you all the time right right plus they to schedule appointments they'll send you a text message letting you know that um check in here to make sure that you're going to arrive at your appointment right you know they're, they're very uh proactive in that regard okay what have we got for questions anybody on here um, have questions yeah we we have one here um it says could we use a password manager to hold our medicare card um, it could also be shared with uh, a known contact who might be um, POA or H, uh, healthcare, uh, one, one kind of healthcare provider. I'm not sure the password manager would actually capture that. Password managers do just that. They capture passwords and not that information. Um, Sometimes uh, some um, phones, I, I know the iPhones have like the wallet Mm -hmm. component right. where um, that may be a place you can kind of take a picture of your card and load it into your wallet um, on your phone. And, and you know, that might be okay. As well, well, actually somebody, the person did add more to it. it says, no, it does hold it as a secure note. So <clears throat> if you have a password manager, a great place to put it, I guess. Um, yeah. And it says, I use it myself and with my family. Um, oh. And with this, this um, recording that you're going to get, please share it with other people who are on Medicare or thinking about Medicare. For the next, um, oh gosh, for the next how many months now, from, Octo uh, from October 15th through the December 7th, we're going to be bombarded with television ads. And the television ads are not for traditional Medicare Part A and Part B. That, that is just the government run part. The, it's the private health insurance that's attached to Medicare that is um, that are being marketed. And if you're not sure, of, if you're going to go on to Medicare or say you've had an advantage plan or not right, maybe you're not quite happy with it and it's been less than a year, I would contact your local uh, senior center and talk to somebody called a SHINE counselors. SHINE stands for uh, serving health insurance needs for everyone. And talk to those folks about what your options are. They're never going to tell you what to do, but they're going to give you information so you can make an informed decision. Medicare is a complicated program. Um, as a matter of fact, I got a call yesterday talking about Jim, getting calls and thinking about things. Uh, I got a call. And because I, I volunteer with Senior Medicare Patrol as well as AARP, uh, I pick these calls up sometime to see what, what they're saying. And this woman come on, came on and she said that she was calling from Medicare Helpline. And I asked her if she was calling from Medicare. And she says, no, I'm calling from the Medicare. Well, she didn't say no. She re just reiterated that she's calling from the Medicare Helpline. And I said, so you're not Medicare. And then she asked me if I had received my new card yet. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to hear how they're, how they're marketing this. Um, you know, as... When we were kids, before we left the house, our parents would say, don't talk to Jim. Don't strangers, talk to strangers. Don't talk to, 
Well, you shouldn't talk to strangers on the phone either. If yeah. you don't, like you said, Jim, if you don't know who's calling, don't answer the phone. Um, it is very easy for somebody to ask you certain questions that will get you off guard. And you, you're you going to start to share some personal information <laughs> that you don't think is all that personal, but they can use it and they will tend to get more information from you as it goes on. Right. If, I, you know, if I get a call and I don't recognize the number, I do not answer if they leave a voicemail, I will listen to it. And if it sounds like legitimate, I'll call back. If yeah. they don't leave a voicemail, the number gets blocked. Period. They don't need to get they don't need to get all the information all at once. They can get it in uh by chunks. And another aside, in town here where I am, they were having a Medicare fraud uh discussion uh, with some group that came in. I was actually going to send you guys the um the notice. Was going on this week? Um, to me, about notices, let's go back to the question here about the Medicare summary notices and the explanation of benefits. Again, if you have traditional A and B Medicare, you're going to get this Medicare summary notice. And it's important to look at those. And they can look a little confusing, but it's important to, to have somebody look at it with you. There's only a couple of pieces of information that are important. One, make sure it's coming. It's your information that your name and your Medicare number is on the on the first page. And when you go to the second page, look at who the provider was, look at the date of service and make sure you receive that, that service on that date from that provider. Um, so th that's important. Uh, before we, um, I think that's, oh, yeah, there's another question here. Can you enable turn on silence calls to avoid spam calls? Um, it depends on your carrier, I think. Yeah. Um, it has to do with, um, I'm not sure about turning on silent calls. Um, my just, phone will tell me, my phone has a thing it does where it says suspect that spam sometimes. Um, but I think it does that if it's, if it's a number that's been reported to Google or something. Um, but but again, if it's an important call and people want to reach you, they're going to leave a message. Yeah. And if it's if it's a spam call, they're not going to leave a message. And so that's my philosophy and it's worked so far. They, they could also send you a text and say, hey, it's me. Pick up your damn phone. Exactly. <laughs> uh, here's here. Let's I'm going to share this screen for a minute um, and you're going to get a copy of this. It is a it's a resources. Um, these are all, once you get it, you can click on any one of these blue links and it'll bring you to the site. So you can check on Medicare information on AARP's website, um, the AARP Medicare Resource Center. And actually over here on the right side, there are three different articles there or sections that you can read. It tells how the scams works, what you should do and what you should know and gives you some do's and don'ts on Medicare scams, on Medicare identity theft, which is different than regular identity theft and Medicare card scams. Um, you can click here to get to the Medicare Senior Patrol homepage and you can find in your state who to contact uh, for your, your um, uh, local, your state uh, senior Medicare patrol. I'm sitting up actually here in Lawrence today at the uh, Massachusetts senior Medicare patrol uh, office. Um, here's, if you live in Massachusetts, you can click right here and go to the Massachusetts uh, SMP homepage. Uh, there's other information. Everyone should, who's on Medicare should set up a My Medicare account at mymedicare.gov. This link here will bring you to that. Um, and you should set it up and put your information in. I get, by doing this, I get my explanation of benefits every month electronically, as opposed to getting them every three months on paper. Yeah. Uh, you can link, um, as we hear on, as we hear every, uh, for the fr uh, second Tuesday of every month with Fraud Talk Tuesdays, if you had missed one of the previous um Broad Talk Tuesdays that we had conducted, you can click on this link and look at all the previous ones for this past year. Right. And, and if uh, you think there's a scam, in, it, in addition to calling the Senior Medicare Patrol, you can call the AARP Fraud Watch Helpline at 877-908-3360 and talk to these folks, well-trained people, they will tell you whether it's a scam, uh, that if 
And if you have been involved in the scam, they can tell you what to do next to keep yourself safe. Yeah, yes. um, that uh, what, uh, discussion I was talking about, that's actually this Thursday, and it's being put on by the Senior Medicare Patrol. Yes. They're coming here to talk to the seniors at the Perfect. Senior Center. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and at the very bottom, we have a, a quick note. Um, as we look ahead to 2025 and um, doing more Fraud Talk Tuesdays, if there's anyone out there that has been victimized by a scam and would like to help share their story with everybody, we'd be thrilled to have you join us. And on the bottom of the screen, uh, Polly uh, uh, Mendoza, had, here is her um, her email address that you can talk, you can email her and say, yeah, I'd like to get involved with Fraud Talk Tuesdays and share my story. Yeah. So. That um, that pretty much winds up. Um, let me stop sharing. Bring the two of you back. I can't be the only one that's getting scared. And let's see if there's any other questions. I don't see any other questions in the Q&A. Um, but before you make any decision Facebook relative to going on Medicare, make sure you talk to your uh, shine counselor at your um at your senior center. These people are, are worth their weight in gold. They have lots of, they're trained every year on the new changes in Medicare, and they will help explain what options are out there. And again, they will never tell you what to do, but they will make give you information so you can make an informed decision. Jim, any final thoughts? Follow nope, I'm fresh out of ideas. My thing is follow your instincts. If something doesn't sound right, That's chances true. are it's not right. Right. And two things that we all all heard, if it sounds too good to be true, the reverse of that is true also. To if it true. sounds too bad to be true, it probably is. Yeah, exactly. Jim, you want to tell them what's up for uh, next month? Uh, I don't have that up. You don't? All right. I will tell them then. Um, national elections are just around the corner. Uh, so please join us next month uh, on for Fraud Talk Tuesday on October 8th. We will, we will discuss 11 ways to fight election misinformation and disinformation, regardless of which uh, what your political affiliation is. So thanks for joining us today. And remember, if you can spot a scam, you can stop a stop scam. Stop a scam. And we had a couple of thank yous from people. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Whoops, we, we, we have one, maybe one question. I have an iPhone and it's set to silence. Okay, depending on which phone, if it's an Android or if it's a, um, an Apple phone, an iPhone, uh, you may have different options available. Right. So check those out, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. It's another question here. It says, when they, when they call you and listen to what you say, uh, don't agree, just hang up, exactly. Yeah. If you happen to pick up, don't agree to anything. Just hang up. Once you figure out it's a, it's a scam. Um, and listen, once, this is very important. This is my thing that I do. And I try to let people know. When people call you, and if you happen to pick up by mistake and it's a spam call, a lot of times, what do they do? They'll say, Teresa? And what do you say? Yes, no. If someone calls you and they don't first identify themselves, say, who's calling, please? And you'd be surprised how many times I've done that and the person has hung up. So don't ever just say yes when they say your name because sometimes that's what they want and now they've got that yes recorded and who knows what they've already obtained about you um, and they now have your authorization. So always make the person identify themselves um, before you start speaking to them. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Jim. Um, and You're welcome. Join us next month for election misinformation and disinformation, ways to fight it. And remember, if you can spot a scam, you can stop a scam. Thanks, everyone. Take care.